while I did wonder if it would happen, and apparently it has. If you read my book Sorcery, you will have noticed that I made the connection. I'm not the first one to do this, of course, but there was definitely a a reinterest in this idea that Crowley had created the Loch Ness monster. I'll just read the section from my book Sorcery: The Invocation of Strangeness, dealing with this. It's, the segment is called Crowley's Nessie and Lovecraft's Cthulhu. Understandably. Their excitement can be somewhat forgiven when one considers that there is evidence to suggest that the Loch Ness Monster itself was created as a result of a magical ritual which Alistair Crowley had performed in 1889. Crowley began, but left unfinished, his working of the rite of Abamelon the Mage, from his home on Beleskin House on the shores of Loch Ness. A water elemental arose, accidentally created by Crowley, and which now many consider to be the fabled Loch Ness Monster. The many hyped appearances of the Loch Ness Monster started to occur after Crowley had left the location due to the wickedest man in the world finding the Abamelon the Mage ritual far too stressful and intense even for the great beast 666 himself. He'd also been recalled back to do some work with the the magical orders and that was half that was that was half the reason why he left that ritual incomplete as well now what's when i brought the book out sorcery i was wondering if anything would happen with loch ness and lo and behold lo and behold not only was that happening but also the local authorities in scotland we're planning to buy Beleskin House and restore it. It's currently in a ruin at the moment uh, because it's damaged in a fire. And it should be bought and it should be restored and made open to the public because it, between Crowley being there and it also being the home to Jimmy Page, it has a very powerful cultural and historic presence in the landscape and it should be open to the public. Now, I've just been noticed on Facebook a story has appeared in the Daily Mail and apparently on all days but Valpurgis Day 2018 Nessie shows up now the title of this article is is the Loch Ness, Ness monster is this the Loch Ness monster tourist films creature swimming in the Scottish Highlands for 10 minutes a tourist claims that he has spotted the famed Loch Ness monster for 10 minutes Ian O'Fahan said that he was left stunned by the sighting of the 20-foot monster. The sighting is the second recorded record accepted this year by the official Loch Ness Monster Society's registry. A lot of people do send in videos and photographs and so on of what they think is the Loch Ness Monster to the registry or the register. And they're, they're nearly all rejected because they may be otters or salmon or something floating in the lake or someone swimming or a boat. But to, they're actually quite uh, stringent in their in their process of allowing what's in and what's out. So this is quite significant. What's also very significant about this sighting is that it took place for a long time. Long time. Now I'll continue with the story. A tourist claims he has spotted the famed Loch Ness monster and even has ten minutes of footage of the creature cavorting in the water. Ian O'Fahavan said that he was left stunned by the sighting of a 20-foot monster in the Scottish Highlands and has even had his footage accepted by the official Loch Ness Monster sightings register. The 53-year-old from Donegal, Ireland quickly grabbed his phone when he saw the elusive creature. The hospital clerical worker took a 10-minute video from the Loch Ness webcam. And then it has the video there on the Daily Mail site. I will link this down below. He said he had watched a Nessie webcam for many years. I just click in now and then for 20 minutes. It's better than watching Coronation Street, said Mr. O'Fahavang. I've seen a couple of things over the years, but I've never been explained as a boat or something. But they, they have been explained as a boat or something else. But it was on April 30th. That's really incredible when you think about it that he had a terrific shock. I couldn't believe my eyes. I just started recording it on my phone. I just followed it. It was very unusual. 
It was certainly something big. It dived down, up and down again, and dived and disappeared. It was not a boat, it was not a log. I would say it was Nessie. I believe in Nessie, but not as a plesiosaur, but as something that has evolved in Loch Ness over thousands of years. The creature moves from right to left as it swam towards Urquhart Bay, a reported favourite haunt of Nessie, and is seen diving and surfacing with water splashes. The sightings, the second recorded accepted of the year of the Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register, comes only days after DNA sampling is to be used to discover previously unrecorded organisms in the loch. However, Professor Neil Gemmell, a New Zealand scientist leading the project, said he did not believe in Nessie, but he was confident of finding genetic codes of other creatures. He said a biological explanation might be found to explain some of the stories about the Loch Ness Monster. The team will collect tiny fragments of skin and scales for the next two weeks in June. Mr. Orfahavan has been to Loch Ness four times as part of his Highland holidays, and in July 1987 also had a momentary unexplained sighting. But nothing like this, it was just incredible, he said. Gary Campbell, keeper of the official register of sightings at Loch Ness, said, as far as Nessie footage goes, this is a feature film. Normally you only get videos of one or two seconds. It is remarkable in its length, and again shows the increased sightings of Nessie from the internet. He then goes on, clearly it is something that dives in and out of the surface of the water, splashes and reflections. It's unexplained. The object would be no larger than 20 feet. There is something there on the video that is clearly moving. Last week an 8 year old and her grandmother claimed to have caught the monster on camera while on a boat trip on the lake. Nessie 11 accepted sightings in 2017 with the highest in this century, so something's happening there. A woman who had explained a monster surprise on her honeymoon in the Highlands is also one of £1,500 for her experience. The annual Best Nessie Sightings of the Year was won by Rebecca Stewart of Lancashire with a picture she took on her honeymoon last October. Miss Stewart from Chatterton Oldham photographed and saw a large fin shape for five minutes. Her husband Paul also saw the creature which was taken while they were with their two-year-old son Thomas along with the family dog. Mrs. Stewart's sighting was accepted by an official Loch Ness Monster sightings register and was entered into the competition with a prize of £1,500 given by the bookmakers William Hill. And then they have a segment on the, the, uh, the obligatory 1500 year old mystery of Nessie's and they talk about the Irish missionary Saint Columba who first encountered the beast in 565 AD. Well that's all nonsense and I'll tell you why. In my book Sorcery the Invocation of Strangeness that did happen, that sighting was not recorded in Loch Ness itself. It was a, it was a serpent in the River Ness many many miles away near the, near the city of Inverness, nowhere near the loch. And also Every single lake had a monster in it, according to the early Christians when they first came to these islands. And they used to perform these exorcisms of monsters, these, these, these shows at these lakes, even the one up the road for me, they did it. In order to sort of impress the local pagans, to show that they were as, they as, they as, they as much magic as the Druids. So the St. Columba alleged sighting of exorcism of Loch Ness back in 500s is bogus and can't be counted because it distinctly says it took place in the River Ness which was nowhere near Loch Ness. Now I believe in Nessie and I believe it, it that is directly a result of Crowley not completing the Abimelon the Mage ritual. Uh, an elemental was trapped or an entity was trapped and of course they'll always find their way to water because water is heavily con connected to consciousness and these, this is why these entities always seem to end up in the water. It's trapped there probably for all eternity. So I kind of feel a little sorry for it. And it's definitely connected to consciousness in terms of manifestations regarding interest in it. So for instance, when there's an interest in anything to do with the Nessie experience, they, they go up, the numbers of sightings increase. Now that scientist was quite on the ball when he said that he didn't believe in it as a biological creature because it's not. 
and it's the same thing as when people say why don't we get crystal clear images of ufos that they're, they're always fuzzy and that's because the same thing with nessie they're not there you, you can't this, this is what proves that ufos are not alien spaceships they're disturbances in the field their our ancestors called these things demons and that's actually a better description although i don't know exactly what a demon is myself it's definitely some kind of a uh, some kind of entity or extrapolation of consciousness that has an autonomy of its own that exists in the field and its presence is made by disturbances in the field like when you have a, an interest when, you, when these things take an interest in you in your own home books and things fly off the wall while I was writing sorcery the invocation of strangeness I had my house literally was exploding they'll they'll come they're not look they don't mean you any harm they will they, they're just interested and they have effects upon the field the, the quantum field around you so you no matter how close you would get to Nessie you would always get a fuzzy picture till eventually you wouldn't see anything it's very similar to the the experience of looking for the beginning of the rainbow when you go looking for the start of the rainbow it starts vanishing as soon as you get close to it you can only see the rainbow touching the ground when you're at a, a good distance away from it and this is why our ancestors connected rainbows to things like fairy fate and pots of gold at the end of the rainbow because they knew there was a that there was a supernatural element to it and the same thing exists with the nessie and the ufo things so if these people want a perfectly clear photograph of the loch ness monster looking like you would see it as a in jurassic park or something it's never going to happen one because it's not a dinosaur two because it's not actually there i mean when it, it's not actually there as a physical mass it's there as a disturbance in the quantum field all you will see is the effects that are caused and thirdly the closer you get the these are, these effects will they, they, they vanish they're only visible from a certain vantage point it's very similar to the double slit experiment in quantum in quantum mechanics it it becomes aware when you make an observation when you make the observation it becomes aware it's definitely intrinsically connected to the viewer and the observer it's real in the sense that the experience is happening that the entity is happening that the field is being disturbed it's not real in the sense that it's part of the material universe only it's almost like you're only seeing its shadow or its reflection so i was wondering if there would be a nessie manifestation after my book came out because that's that's quoted in the first chapter and it's usually one of the first things people read there's also been the stories of this, the the restoration of Boleskine House and now this. The fact that it even appeared on Valpurgis is important too because if you've heard me talk and write so many times about these are the parts of the year where the the field is softer, where the field is is it can be accessed. This is why our ancestors said that the the entities or the ghosts, the demons, the fairies were able to move or the dead would come. It's because of the Earth's relationship to the sun, the distance from the sun, and the effects upon the Earth's magnetic field. It creates a shift over effect. And it literally, it's, it's, it happens on a microcosm on a smaller scale at 3 a.m. in the morning. Because as the Earth, as the sun, which at the furthest point the Earth is from the sun in terms of darkness, at the night, that the actual magnetic field of the Earth is, is very different than what it is in the sun is overhead. At that point it starts coming back it's slipped away after midnight it doesn't matter where you are in the world what time zone you're st still still the same it's still you're still on the other side of the world uh, you preach you approach the witching hour of 3 a.m it the flips over and the actual strength regaining of the magnetic field is what causes us to people to wake up at 3 a.m in the morning or have their night attacks or their the uh, night hag attacks or sleep paralysis and other strange experiences they're just waking for no reason at 3 a.m the brain has detected the magnetic field well on a greater scale this is what happens at the the solstice particularly the 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 uh, the autumnal which is which would have like halloween Samhain, and the the, the spring which you would have as a uh, beltane and may 1st and the day before valpurgis and the the veil opens the door opens and uh, here we are we have nessie so Anyone who ever tells you that these things are not real, they're usually saying it because they don't fully understand the experience. They're just uh, applying a kind of superficial narrative to it. But let me tell you for a fact, uh, there's proof right there. 
I'm not saying I conjured the Loch Ness Monster up on April 30th. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that maybe the whole experience conjures everything together. Thank you.